Hey, what's up? Welcome back. This is day six for the advent of code. We're solving this with Ruby again. Uh, this episode is all about lanternfish, where sort of the you're going to see a pool or a, a school of lanternfish, and that school is going to grow sort of exponentially quickly. And the way that it works is that a, a lanternfish can live seven days, so it lives like one week. And um, the idea is that like, or I guess it lives longer, I don't know, but at the end of those seven days, it births another lanternfish. So your input is the ages for a bunch of lanternfish. And uh, you sort of like count down the age until it gets to zero. And when it gets to zero, the fish resets to six, um, or like the age of that fish resets to six and a new lanternfish is born with a timer of eight. So it sort of takes two days or whatever, two ticks for a lanternfish to become uh, uh, old enough to have new lanternfish or something. Um, so here's an idea, or to give you an idea of what it looks like, you, you start with this initial state. These are again all of the ages of the lanternfish. And when we go to the next tick, you'll notice that everyone got younger or like everyone aged one day. So all of the values d decreased by one. Right, so now from three to two, four to three, three to two, zero, or one to zero, et cetera. But now when this zero goes to the next number, it switches to a six. And because this switched from a zero to a six, we add an eight to the end. Because this, this fish right here in this fourth position birthed a new lantern fish and it reset its life to six days. And then on the next time when we go down, this fish is a zero and this switches to a six. And now we birth another lantern fish. And the one that was born yesterday is now one day older, and this one is is just born. Okay, so that's kind of the idea for the way that um, this thing works. So let's jump in here and add a new day six, and we're gonna add a school.rb, and that'll be like our school of fish, and we'll add day six spec.rb, and in our spec we're gonna require relative. Um, day six school.rb and our spec dot describe do um, let's see so uh, it decrements ages by one when it ticks so tick is like a term from a clock right a tick is like every time the clock ticks and because in this case one tick is kind of like one day so our school will have like a tick method. So we'll have like um, school is described class dot new and it's gonna have some ages. So maybe we pass in like four to start. And then if we do school dot tick, we expect that school dot ages to equal um, three, something like that. Uh, run the test and it fails. Uninitialized constant school. So we gotta come back over here and add class school. Uh, okay, run it again. And boom, wrong number of arguments. So school needs to take in the ages uh, of all of the fish. And we run this again. I think it was running, I interrupted it. Okay, so undefined method tick. So now we need to add a tick method, tick. And this is gonna do nothing to start with and then it's just gonna say, we have the wrong answer. Okay, expected three but got four. So in order to get three, we wanna like map the ages at ages.map bang. So we're gonna like actually modify all the ages in place. And we'll say for each age, we want the age to equal I guess age minus one, um, what does that do? Okay, at least that gets our test passing. So it deck, uh, or like it uh, uh, resets to six after zero. Like remember that like after we reach zero, we uh, need to like reset back to six so that it can count back down again. So let's see what that gets us here. So if we start with zero, we are expecting that we're gonna get back to six. And let's see what we get. 
Uh, we got negative one. Okay, so then we need to update our tick method here so that it does something like um, for each age, maybe um, we can say something like if uh, like six or maybe like if a is um, one return six else end or maybe we only want that to, to happen with zero. Let's see. Okay, so that seems to work. So it um, births a new fish after zero. So this one, we're expecting that it not only goes back to six, but it also now includes an eight for a brand new fish that was born. So if we come back over here, um, we kind of want to know how many fish are going to be born. So I think we need to count like the births is at ages dot count, count the zeros. And then I think we need to add um, ages shovel in or like plus equals uh, eight times births. So the births here is going to be the count of how many births there are. And we want to add that many eights into the array. So we're going to um, concatenate with an array of however many eights. Let's see if that works. All right, that's passing. Um, and then what else do we need to do here? So I think that should sort of build up the right way. Um, and then the answer is after 80 days, there would be a total of so, like 5,934 fish. Sim to find a way to simulate how many lantern fish there would be after 80 days. So this is just after 18 days, how many there would be. So this is our actual input. And it seems like what we actually want at the end of this is like some um, num fish or something. And this is just ages.count, I think. Uh, but I think what this is expecting is it... Oh yeah, I guess we also need a way to tick a certain number of days. So like, um, it works for the example case and we'll just plop in this example use case here. So um, school is described class.new, plop in the example, school.passdays80, and then we expect school dot, what is it called? Numfish, numfish to equal. And it tells us that it's gonna be equal to 5,934. So let's run this. Okay, undefined method past days. So past days is gonna take in some number of days and that's how many times we wanna call tick. So n dot times tick. And that's it. All right. Hey, we got a passing test. All right. Oh, okay. Expected six guts. Oh, you know what? This test here is a bad test now because we technically want to birth. Uh, we want to birth a new fish. So I'm going to delete that test, and our test should be good to go now. Okay. So that's part one. Um, and I guess. Down here, we wanna say like, if file is $0, then we wanna read in the number of fish, which we can do, and we can just say like, uh, file.read and argv.first. Because we're just reading one single line, we don't actually need read lines here. We can just do read.chomp.splitonComma.map. Um, to i and that should give us our ages and then we want to say school is school.new for ages and then we want to put like school.num fish and if we add in our input what is our actual test input for this our puzzle input whoa that's a lot of fish all right Okay, and then if we say Ruby uh, day six school day six school dot rb 
day six input. Oh, we didn't pass any days. So 300 is actually the starting number of fish. Okay, so school.pass days 80 and then run it. Ooh, that's taking a long time. Okay, 386,640, 386,640. So that's part one of this lanternfish school thing. All right, part two. Suppose the lanternfish live forever and can have unlimited food and space. Would they take over the entire ocean? After 256 days in the example above, there would be what? Okay, 29... Uh, billion, nine hundred and eighty-four million, four hundred and fifty-seven thousand, five hundred thirty-nine. So, if we just try to run this and say two fifty-six, that's what it wants. Is like, what is the answer if we let them continue expanding for two hundred and fifty-six days? Because it's growing exponentially. Our array, like our array had this many elements last time and it's getting too big and it's still running and it's getting bigger and it's getting bigger and more fish are being born and oh my gosh, I can't let it go because it's going to kill my computer. So we need a more efficient solution. We need a much more efficient solution. Also, this kind of bothers me how like, I don't know, it's just kind of messy. Um, so let's just simplify this a little bit. Uh, and okay. So that should, I think it should still work, right? All of our tests still pass. Okay. Um, all right. So what is a more efficient solution? Well, part of the reason why it takes so long to run is that we are working with an array and we're keeping track of all these ages with an array and expensive things that are happening. Well, one here we are, um, we're doing a in place replacement of all of the elements of the array. That's expensive here. We have to count all the zeros. So we have to like go through every single element of the array and count up all the zeros here. We are, concatenating two arrays. So if if we have an array in memory that has like 800,000 elements and then we're going to add 25 births to it, that's going to make it so that we have to create another array in memory. So like the bigger and bigger it gets, we're starting to do like memory swaps and like all this craziness. So what we can do is get clever about the representation. So this output here kind of tricks us because it's like, oh, look at all these lists of numbers. Maybe you should store it in arrays. Not true. That's like, yeah, it's a trick. So what we can do instead of storing it in arrays is we can store the, instead of, and instead of storing like each individual fish's age, all the fish are one of, of nine ages, right? They're either zero through eight. And so instead of storing all of their ages, we just need to store how many fish are each age. Okay. How many fish are each age? And we can store that inside of a map or a hash or a dictionary or whatever you want to call it, an object where the key is the age and the value is the number of fish that are that age. So let's do that. So let's modify this um, so that we have the ages instead of it coming or instead of ages being an array, we'll take in ages. And then we will, well, we're gonna create this as, a, as an object. And then we're gonna say zero, um, zero to eight, or just, yeah, eight, nine times do um, I. And then we're gonna say uh, ages at I equals ages.count I. So this, this should create a hash with, the number of ages. So let's go refactor our tests. So um, this one should no longer. Yeah. Okay. So tick, like all this stuff is broken now, right? Um, so we need to, we need to start from scratch. So we're going to create a new instance of, uh, of a thing. And then let's check like, that the representation is what we expect. So we expect that school dot ages to actually, yeah, like we'll just comment out tick for now. And we expect school dot ages to equal, um, zero goes to zero. 
um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And um, since we passed in a four, we expect this one to be one. Um, I think that's what we get. Uh, okay, cool. So this is the this is the internal representation. Now we're just keeping track of how many there are at each spot. So then after we do school.tick, there should just be one, three, right? And it's failing because there's no method tick. So we have to redefine tick, what this actually means. So the number of births is now gonna be ages at index zero. That's our new number of births. And then instead of mapping over and replacing the underlying ages, we need to take all of the ages at each index and scoot them over. We need to scoot them over, right? So we need to say something like um, at ages dot map um, key value. And we're gonna set ages at, actually let's do this, let's do this uh, again by doing like nine dot times. Um, and we want to set ages at i equal to ages at i plus one, I think, right? Because i plus one is the bigger one, and that's what we want to set into i. Yep. Um, and do we want to do it? I think we want to only do it eight times, right? Because i plus one, or we're going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. i plus one will be eight. We move them all down and then, then we're going to overwrite uh, ages at six should be births. So that's like how many people were born and then, or no, is it, yeah, it's plus equals and then ages um, at eight is going to equal births, right? I think that's right. I don't know. Maybe. Okay, that can't be right. Is it right? All right, our representation here is wrong. Expected six and eight, but we did get one six and one eight. So that's cool. So let's, uh, yeah, I guess we can just say instead of six and eight, we expect there to be one six and one eight. And run this again. And are all of our, okay, past days. We need to make a method past days. That actually stays the same. And then numfish, instead of being ages.count, we need to sum up all of the values because that'll be how many fish there are for each age. So we want to say dot values dot inject uh, plus, I think our tests all still pass. Okay, so now and this is the moment of truth, right? Will it work with 256? I don't know. Boom, look at this humongous number. Holy moly. So what is that? Oh gosh, 1 trillion, 733 billion, 403 million, 662,279. And that is the answer. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.